Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. Here's my offering. Lay me at the throne. Leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory. Sing to you this song. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. Here's my offering. Lay me at the throne, leave me there alone, to gaze upon your glory, and sing to you this song. Take me to the King. God, we love you. God, we thank you. And God, we give you all the praise for allowing us this opportunity to come to you, O oh God, as we approach the preaching moment. God, we ask that something will be said and something will be done that will renew hearts, minds, and souls back to you. God, touch those who are viewing through their virtual space and let them know, O oh God, that you are still on the throne that you still deserve all the glory. God, we ask, you, we ask that you will provide the anointing because that is what makes preaching easy. Allow CJ to decrease and you to increase. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Good morning to all of you who are out there in the virtual space. Good morning to Genesis Baptist Church. Good morning to all of the youth who are part of the Genesis Baptist Church youth ministry. Good morning to all of the youth who are out there in Greensboro. I am youth minister CJ Brinson, and I am so blessed to be with you today. Today we have a message that is in store for you. I ask now that you would turn with me in your Bible to Mark the 14th chapter, verses 3 through 9. Mark the 14th chapter, verses 3 through 9. I will be reading from the New International Version. You follow along in whatever version that you may have. Mark chapter 14. Verse 3 through 9. And it reads, while he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar, a very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, Jesus said. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will have with you and you can help them anytime you want. But you will not have me. She did what she could. She poured the perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Focus verse, verse 8. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told 
in memory of her. And while you have the scripture in your hearing, I want you to reflect on the sermon topic. She kept on serving. She kept on serving. This Sunday is Palm Sunday, Sunday when many of us will direct our attention to the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. However, today I want to refocus our attention. I want to refocus our attention on another event that happens in close proximity to the triumphal entry. Today, I want to refocus our attention on a woman. Yes, I want to refocus our attention on a woman because uh, we know that women have their place uh, in the passion experience. I want to refocus our attention on a woman because even though today is the last Sunday of the month, it is still Women's History Month. And because it is still Women's History Month, we still have a duty to honor women. Women uh, who society, uh, who science says rather, claims to predate all of humanity uh, with evidence of, of, of be having an existence over 200,000 years ago found in Ethiopia, in Africa, known as Lucy or the mighty chondral Eve. She stood up and she, she walked out of Africa. She uh, traveled and populated in Europe, in Asia, in Australia, and even the Americas. Gave birth to a nation and her descendants, they gave up of their sweat, blood, and tears uh, 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 to build this country into what it is today. A woman who, who Dr. Uh, ben uh, uh, Yakanen says that, 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 that the women, and particularly black women, may be the closest representation that we have to the divine right here on earth. Yes, women, uh, women, they will, will love those who hate them. They will make life for those who, who hurt them. They will serve those who will desert them, yet and still able to possess the gift of unconditional love. A woman, a woman uh, who, who, who claims the likeness of other women like Ella Baker and, 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 and Fannie Lou Hamer, Asada Shakur, Angela Davis, Opal Tometi, and Alicia Garza. A woman like uh, uh, Michelle Obama, uh, uh, Kamala Harris, Alexander Ocasio-Cortez, Coretta Scott King, and even Beyonce. And, 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 and a woman, a woman like uh, the women of Genesis Baptist Church. Uh, and if it had not been for the women of Genesis Baptist Church, we would not be here today uh, celebrating the life of our church on our 24th year anniversary. But my beloved friends, I want you to come here this morning Follow me to the text. We find Jesus this morning reclined at a table days before crucifixion. Chilling out, relaxing, maxing all cool, shooting some b-ball outside of the school. We find Jesus chilling, maxing and relaxing in Bethany. The book of Mark says that Jesus was at Simon the leper's house, and all of a sudden, a woman with no name, with an alabaster jar, 
breaks the jar and pours perfume on his head. In some translations, it is said that she placed the oil on his feet. In other translations, it says that she washed his feet with the oil, with her hair, and with her tears. You could imagine the, the stir that this uh, particular action caused in the community. You could imagine how her actions could be viewed as scandalous. She begins to wash someone's feet with her hair and her tears. Immediately, the, the critics, uh, uh, the men of the day, they were critiquing her actions. Immediately, they questioned who would waste oil. Uh, 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 that could have been used uh, to be able for us to gain money for our treasury. That oil could have been used for us to take care of the poor. Who in the, 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 the world would, would wash feet with their hair and tears? A scandal following Palm Sunday. But Jesus replies, leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? This woman has done something beautiful for me. She has prepared uh, my body for burial. She did what she could. What she has done uh, shall be remembered forever. Here is Jesus facing crucifixion on Friday. The powers of the world will converge upon him with unrepentant violence. The, the Roman government has to neutralize him because the people have claimed him to be the king of kings. Hosanna, Hosanna. The church wants him dead because he has turned their religion upside down, uh, preaching that you should love your neighbor. Preaching that you should pray for your enemies and those who despitefully use you. Preaching that he who is without sin shall cast the first stone. Preaching that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And in the face of impending cataclysmic uh, doom, in the face of impending uh, cosmic catastrophe, in the face of impending social upheaval, in the face of death and despair, Jesus is maxing and relaxing and honoring the actions of this woman. Jesus is directing the reader of the text to understand that, that although God is facing death, this woman's actions are producing hope. That although Jesus is scheduled to die, uh, this woman's actions show us how to respond with love, sacrifice, and radical service. That in the face of hopelessness, she is teaching us that there is hope in service. I know it looks bad, but keep on praying. I know it looks rough, but keep on trusting. Hope looks dim, but keep on believing. Joy looks far off, but keep on seeing. Singing. I know you have to bury your master, but keep on serving. This woman's experience speaks to our experience as black people in America, speaks to our experience as a community, speaks to the, the, the character of women. Uh, who at every turn in human history, in the face of adversity, they have continued to love, sacrifice, and serve their communities. When it, is, when it has seemed that, that the universe was up against us, women have held to the faith, uh, women have kept trusting in God, women have kept uh, believing uh, in, in, in the fact that things will somehow get better. 
Uh, this is the same belief that has sustained us. It has sustained us through slavery. It has sustained us through reconstruction. It has sustained us through Jim Crow. It has sustained us through Reaganomics. It will deliver us from, from mass incarceration. It will deliver us from wealth inequality. It will deliver us from joblessness. It will deliver us from racism. It will deliver us from militarism and sexism. It will deliver us from state sanctioned violence. It will deliver us from any ism that threatens God's vision of peace and harmony. It will deliver us from any ism that threatens God's vision of the kingdom of God or the, the kingdom of God or the beloved community. It is the same belief. It is the same faith. It is the same trust, the same love, uh, the same sacrifice and service that sustains this woman to know that although she had to bury her God, that although Jesus would be put to death, that he would get up again. That although that there was death that was impending, there was a new opportunity for life. Yes, the men, the men, they may have misinterpreted the moment, but this woman understood the vision. She understood the vision, so she kept on pouring oil on his head. She understood the vision, so she kept on anointing God's head. She understood the vision, so she kept on washing God's feet with her hair. She, kept, she understood the vision, and so she kept on crying and washing God's feet with her tears. She understood the vision, so she kept on giving all that she had. She understood the vision, so she kept on giving what she could. She knew that somehow things would get better, and so she kept on serving. So church, this morning, in the face of adversity, in the face of challenges, even in the face of COVID-19, we are going to honor the women for all of their radical service. Thank you to Ella Baker. Thank you to Fannie Lou Hamer. Thank you to Coretta Scott King. Thank you to Mother Teresa. Thank you to Maya Angelou. Thank you to Rosa Parks. Thank you to Claudette Coven. Thank you to Shirley Chisholm. Thank you to Ruth Bader Greensburg. Thank you to Alexander Ocasio Cortez. When life presented you with crucifixion, you kept on serving. Thank you to Michelle Obama. Thank you to Oprah Winfrey. Thank you to Kamala Harris. Thank you to Beyonce. Thank you to Condoleezza Rice. Thank you to Asada Shakur. Thank you to Angela Davis. Thank you to Maxine Waters. We even want to thank you for those who have served us locally. Thank you to Yvonne Johnson. Thank you to Goldie Wells. Thank you to Sandra Alexander. Thank you to Dina Hayes Green. Thank you to Sharon Hightower. Thank you to Carolyn Coleman. Thank you to Carvina Foster. When the journey got rough, you kept on serving. Thank you to Patrice Collins and Opal Tometi. Thank you to Anika Wilson-Brown and Candice Bimbo, Alicia Garza. Thank you to Little Kim and Megan The Stallion. And thank you even to Cardi B. We want to thank you for all of your service. Because when the going got tough, when the road got rough, you kept on serving. And we would be remiss if we didn't thank all of the women of Genesis Baptist Church. Thank you to all of the mothers. Thank you to all of the grandmothers. Thank you to all of the sisters, daughters, the aunties, and the friends. Thank you to all of you who are community leaders. Thank you to all of you who are leaders in our church. Thank you to all of you who are trailblazers in the community. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. 
We couldn't have made it to our 24th anniversary if it had not been for all that you do and how you keep serving us. The world was cruel, but you kept serving. Families turned their backs on you and you kept on serving. You lost friends along the way, but, but you kept on serving. Fathers were absent in the home, but you kept on serving. Children were acting crazy, but you kept on serving. Churches shut their doors, but you kept on serving. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But most importantly, let us remember the woman who prepared her savior for crucifixion. Because she was, we all are. And we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Go in peace. God bless you.